Right, we start ready to start putting in our dimensions so that uh, we have all the dimensions in there so someone can build this house. Now you might remember I've put a few dimensions in here previously. I'm just going to delete these ones out at this stage. Um, I want to put them in again later. And we have a run there I think we used when we were checking that this was all lining up correctly. Um, I don't want to have these grids on the ground floor plan any either because they actually relate to the footings uh, underneath here and they're not really showing anything on this one here so we can actually go in make sure we're on our floor plan visibility and we should be able to find grids in here it's in the annotation category um, and let me just go down and I'm just going to turn those grids off in this view and they will disappear I'm also going to just tidy things up a little bit here too. This section, if I click on it, I can grab that tag and I'm just going to pull it outside of that a little bit there. Just make sure that these are all nice and neat, fairly close to the wall of the house. Just get them all the same. You'll see that when you go on another one like this, you can actually get it to line up with the other one, which is good. And that one looks like it's lining up there now. Okay, so we're going to put some more of those in later on, but at this stage, just make sure they're all neat and nice and tight to the house so that we've got plenty of room to put our dimensions in. One of the other things I just noticed on this drawing is, remember we put in these little dividers to uh, isolate the different rooms, uh, and they're coming up light blue there now. Uh, I think I might uh, also just make those invisible. Remember it was in lines. If we click on the down arrow, come down to room separation, we can just turn that off and OK that. And we've got that out of the way as well. So first of all, we're going to start with uh, where we put our dimensions. We have what's called dimensions runs. If you look at your PDF on this, you'll see that. And I'll just bring that PDF up. You can see that we have what we call a run of dimensions. So it will be one line. We have these little slashes and little projection lines to show where they're aiming at on the house. And there may be two or three or four more uh, dimensions across on that same line. What we're trying to do is to say that the, the nearest run of dimensions is close to the center of the house. And then we work away from that coming up to our last dimension, which is showing our absolute overall size being the furthest one away. If we have a look at the side ones, you can see that this one here is actually a run uh, closer to the house, down this side here, about here. Uh, this one here is on this side showing these walls at 90 here and here. So that's what we're after, to have those various dimension runs. I'm not going to put them all in at this stage. I'm going to just show you how to insert them and how to edit them. And then you can go through following the example in the PDF, putting in your dimensions. So we'll just get rid of that and we'll go back to our drawing. Uh, and the first one, I'm going to start up the top here. I'm going to have a look at where I want these to run across. And I'm looking at starting at about here the first one is going to be a cross section of this this part here. So come up and uh, pick annotate and I'm going to use a lined dimension. OK, um, you might think that's a bit funny. You think we should use the linear one. The line one works very well and um, and it it works a lot better than the aligned. Uh, sorry, the the linear because it will dimension things on different angles as well. It's also available up here in the, tool, the quick toolbar up the top as well. So when we, if we zoom in, I want to get a dimension from here to there and across to there and to there. So the outside of this wall, the inside of that wall, and so on. So all I do is come, and when it highlights on that wall, I will click. And then when it highlights again, I will click. And I'll come along. You see, I've got wall faces selected make sure you have that selected as well come across pick this wall and i'll pick the outside wall as well now you can just drag that up to where you actually want it to be so i'm just coming a little bit above that section mark there and you have to click out and away it's not going to put another one in because there's nothing to select there i'm just going to click and put that into place there the next 
lot of dimensions that we need here are where this door starts and where it finishes and how big that um, door is across there. So I do the same thing again, come in, you probably it's probably best to zoom in here, click on that, find that line where that door starts over and then pick the outside wall there. We could have put the 250s in again, I'm not worrying about that, it's up to you whether you want to do that. And you'll see how this sort of clicks into place when you're in the right area where that needs to go in. Okay, so that it keeps the same distance between each of them. The next one is our um, patio. So the same thing again, I'm coming from the outside. I want to see where the top of that step is and I want to see the outside again there. Again, that clicks into place in the right spot. And the last measurement that I'm going to have there is the overall measurement of the house and, well, in this case, the pergola, but the, the, pergola, the patio and the uh, house are exactly the same measurements. So again, that clicks into space up there. Okay, so that's our one side of runs, and remember that comes from there. So anything you have down the other end will probably need to be recorded down on the other run at the bottom. Let's do the same for the side. We first thing we want to do is pick up all of these rooms across here. So imagine an imaginary line through there. Everything that it crosses, we're going to have in that first run. So I'm coming in. I've got a line pick. I'm picking that first wall. I'm going to come down, pick. Where is it? There it is. That wall. I'm going to pick the other side of that wall. You can see the measurements coming up as we go. That one, the other side of it, that one, the other side of it. Keep on going down all of these walls and the other side of it. That's just telling that all of these stud walls are 90. You just got to get right in close sometimes to be able to pick the wall. Make sure you are picking the wall, not something else, otherwise you might get a wrong measurement. And then we want the inside of that one and the outside of that one and I'm going to drag that out till it's just clear of those section marks and put it in and I can see a mistake I've made there already I'm going to hit escape a couple of times I forgot to put that that double wall on that one there um, so I might add that in right now if we click on this run we can edit the witness line and all you need to do is to come down and click on the first one, go back and click on it again and then just make sure that you click off of that in space there and that will put that in. Okay. Sometimes you might see say, oh, well, I'm doubling up on this wall thickness. That's okay too. That does happen, um, especially if you want to know different room sizes and things. It, it, it does happen, so be aware of that and uh, you shouldn't have any mistakes. Then, so the next run I want to do is along this, this wall here where, where the windows are located. And I'm going to come in, I've got aligned again. I don't really need to have the thickness of the wall here, so I'm only picking the outside. And then I'm coming to each of these walls. Make sure you're right on where they join, so it's the best idea to zoom in. And there's the other side of that window. Start of this window. And really dimensioning is up to the individual. It's just a matter that you just got to realize that everything needs to be um, worked out to exactly where it's going to be. Um, and there's a doorway here, so I'll put that in. And then we have the end of the building. And then we can bring that out and that will, that will lock into place. There's a, that's locking in there now, so I'll put that in there. Okay, so we continue to go out, and all we need now is to have an overall length. We need an overall length of the, the uh, patio, so I'm coming in, grabbing that outside line. Make sure you're getting the proper lines. You can see there's two lines close by there, one's for the, for the railing. I want to make sure I've got that outside one, that one. You can check these against the... and that locks into place there. So now we have our full measurement there. 
showing all the distances. Now, if your distances aren't coming up right, it means you've drawn it up incorrectly and you're going to have to move and edit the walls to get that into the right place, which can be a little bit messy, but um, it's not that hard. So what I want you to do is to go on and complete all the rest of the dimensions around the house going on the um, PDF that you have uh, and hopefully yours have all come up as required. Okay, go on with the next video.